this experience Optimist. And I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you to all the people who have subscribed to my channel. All the people who have left positive comments on my channel. I really appreciate it. I just want to let you guys know that. You know, I want to do as much as possible to, to uh, help men. As we all know, this is a very toxic environment for men and all men. Um, and I want to make sure that I get information out that helps men navigate this upside down, as Chris Cantu would say, clown world. But let me get to my topic. Um, let me break up my notes here. Basically, I wanted to talk about why women are so vindictive. And my theory on why women are so vindictive is because I believe that women are always in survival mode. I remember when I was younger, my dad had a group home, so I was always around group home kids. I actually grew, grew up with group home kids. And what I noticed about group home kids, many of them um, children from single mothers, they were irrational, impulsive, but they were very vindictive. And one of the reasons why I found out they were so vindictive was because they were always in survival mode. Basically, a Mac Machiavellian uh, mindset to where it was dog eat, uh, where it was a dog eat dog world. You know, they were always trying to get over on somebody, and somebody was always trying to get over on them. And that's what I've noticed about women. Women are in survival mode. Just like in the video I made where. Uh, the topic was why women hate other women. All those negative characteristics that most women possess. I believe comes because they're always in survival mode and that they never are not introspective and they never aim to grow. As a human being. Now, some people might say this is harsh. But I've noticed very, a lot of similarities between these group home kids who are in survival mode and then just basic characteristics that women possess. So, for example, what I saw with group home kids is that they were often thrust into an environment, whether it was a group home, maybe, whether it was a juvenile detention center, maybe it was jail. They were thrust into an environment to where they didn't know who to trust. They didn't know who would help them. They basically did not know how what to do. And in order to survive, they would uh, act like they liked certain people that they didn't like. They would do things that to create a front, a false personality, if you will. So that they weren't attacked by other other people. And I found that this is what women do. The fake persona that they portray. How they try to buddy up to people that they really despise. And this is the reason why I believe that women are so vindictive. Because ultimately, like I saw the group home uh, scenario. You would take a person. He would be become friends with another person. They would hang out. They may hustle together. They may um, get over at other people together. They may manipulate the people around them together. But secretly, deep down inside, most of the time they always despise the other person. Especially if the person was in... If there was one person in a position of power and the rest of the people were more like subordinates. There was always lingering resentment that each one of them had for the other. 
So when a, a situation arose to where one person could then dominate the other, they would do so. And they never thought anything was wrong with it because ultimately they always resented that person in the beginning. And that's what I find happens with women. I find that many women have this underlying resentment for the people that they're around, whether it be women or the women, their friends, their male friends, their husbands, their boyfriends. So when they screw them over, they never really feel empathy for that person because that resentment will allow them to create all sorts of excuses and explanation, explanations as to why she was right and her victim her victim um, deserved all of her contempt and hatred and uh, deserved to be used and abused. And that's, and it's the survival mode that I believe that women are in that allows them to continually act this way with the people that they're around. Now, the bad thing about this is so being in survival mode may be good short term, but long term, it is always self destructive. Always. Why is it self-destructive? It's be self-destructive because the person never grows. If you're in survival mode, you're always looking at what's this guy trying to do to me? How can I get over this other guy? What do I need to do to portray uh, 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 the best possible image so that these, this person will like me? When you're acting like that, you're never growing spiritually, you're never growing Psychologically, you're never maturing as a person. Because all you're thinking about is, what can I get? Not what can I give? Now, street smarts is something that, like I said before, can be very helpful in the short term. But long term, what are you going to do? Because if you're thinking that everyone's always out to get you, if you're thinking, how can I get over on everyone that I see? Then you will, a lot of people will avoid, um, avoid the people that really want to help or take um, take their advice, their counsel for granted. I saw this in the group home kids. A lot of group home kids got some really good advice. If they would have just followed that advice, they would have been good to go. And what's really bad also about survival mode is in these group home situations, let's say they were mature enough to come together and say, look guys, I know you may not trust me. I might not trust you, but let's just all get together and collaborate and act civilly towards one another. And we can all thrive on our independent paths, essentially. But that's not what happens in these situations. What happens is a guy comes in, he tries to be the alpha of the, of the group. The other people, if they don't like him, resent him, but act like they're his friend. Of course, bickering arises, and then there's a power struggle, and this power struggle continues and continues. With women, it's the same way. 
A man is supposed to be in the dominant role, leadership role. The woman resents him. She's always picking at him, nagging him, browbeating him. And then there's nothing but contention and misery. The bad thing about it is women are so prone to jealousy, envy, greed that I don't believe now, now that I'm older, that women can ever break themselves out of being in survival mode. Men, men, once they think logically, some of them can break out of that mentality. But I haven't seen many women break out of that mentality. That's why you can see a stripper or a porn star who is extremely intelligent, has a lot to offer, that could easily do something else with their life that benefits others. But because she's in survival mode, she disregards the good advice and carries on the road of self-destruction. Well, anyway, that was just my theory on why women are so vindictive. It's because they have an underlying anger and resentment towards the people that they're around. And when they do finally screw these people over, they feel justified in their actions. If you have a question about MGTOW or you have a particular topic you want me to cover, I'll leave my email in the description box. Feel free to like, subscribe to this video. Give a thumbs up, hit the notification button. Support other MGTOW channels. And I'll talk to you later. This is the Experience Optimist.